saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. Yes, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. shout his name with me come on somebody shout his name amen I worship the, the, the name that's above every name today I don't know what you walked in here with but God's above it if you believe that shout amen 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 we're so glad you're here with us this morning for Sunday service if you're online we welcome you thank you for joining with us if you're online please share this with somebody that could bless them this week, amen. 
good to see all of you wonderful people in the house of God here today. I'm very excited about what God's going to do. Do you believe God's going to do great things today? Yeah. Amen. I come expecting a move, and I already feel him in this place here today. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Not going to take too long, but if you would like to give today, you can give to our ushers that are uh, waiting at the back after service concludes here today. We'll have a, a way for you to give in person. But if you'd like to give online, you can go to our church website, find the giving page, or you can text your way to give. And we appreciate your giving today. Somebody say give. Give. We appreciate all that you do to sacrifice. Amen. Amen. 21 days of prayer kicks off. Somebody say today. Tell somebody to your left, it's today. Tell somebody to your right, it's today. Now, I know we're praying every day. We're praying every week. But this is our church effort together. Somebody say together. That we're going to get these next 21 days. We're going to get the booklet. If you got a booklet, would you wave it up in the air? If you don't have a booklet, please come see us. We have plenty for you to take. And if you would like to do it online, 2022 version, you can go online or our website. You can scan the QR code and you can have it anytime you want throughout the day. You don't have to carry it around. It's on your phone. And just join with us. Each day has a different devotional and a different prayer focus. And so if you will, join with us and pray and see what God will do. Because I know he's going to do great things. Somebody say 24-hour prayer. This is going to be an amazing 24 hours starting September 9th at 10 a.m. And concluding the next day on Saturday at 10 a.m. We have a form online. So if you scan the QR code, it will also take you to a Pray 21 page where you can download the booklet. And you can also sign up for any hour slot for the 24 hours of prayer. So just choose one if you feel you want to do 3 a.m., go on, click 3 a.m., and hit submit. And we're going to pray together at 3 a.m. Uh, if you're an early riser, just help us. It's going to be a great time for us to bind together for 24 hours and pray and come to God. Let's all stand across this building here today. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to do something real quick as our singers come. Would you clap your hands unto the Lord today? Amen, amen. Now all across this room, I know we're not playing Simon Says, but I want to encourage us, all of us here today. Would you lift your hands right now to him right now? Lord, I praise you. I glorify you. Thank you. I wonder right now if you just use your voice right now. Come on, begin to speak things into the atmosphere. God, we want you to move. God, there are needs in this building. But God, more than anything, we want to move the Holy Ghost in this house here today. God, as your word goes forth, as our worship rises. Come on, church. Lift your voice. Lift your hands. Let's worship God today.
reach up and get your miracle right now. Hallelujah. Reach up and get your miracle right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Don't be confused if it doesn't happen right away. Some come out only by prayer and fasting. Some you got to push through right here a little bit. You got to push through right here a little bit. Yes, Lord. 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 Push a little bit right now. Lean into the Word of God. Hallelujah. Put your scripture into the atmosphere right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, let a hallelujah come out of your spirit. The goodness of the Lord, the faithfulness of the Lord. Oh, the goodness of the Lord and the faithfulness of the Lord is in the house of God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Feel after him that he might be found right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. If he beholds the darting small sparrow, surely he knows the position you're in. Amen. He's faithful. Why don't you greet your neighbor and tell him he's faithful? Amen. What a beautiful crowd to all of our guests. You're not guests anymore. You're friends, you're family. And we honor you for being with us today. If you've never been a Christian, let me tell you, the way is hard. It's difficult. Narrow. You've got to be willing to put your heart into it. Don't be deceived by these false prophets that tell you everything is going to be all right. It's not. Got to labor. Got to push through. Anything in life's worth fighting for. How much more should we fight for that which is the eternal? But if you want to make it, you can make it. There's only one way, though, and that's the way of Christ. And you have to be faithful. Say, well, this week I came to the house of God and I fought hell all week afterward. Well, that's to be expected. We'll see you in seven days back in the house of God. It'll get better, but you can't quit. Can't quit. Amen. Amen. Chris will rise, running to be once again the police chief of Westlake. Mr. Will Rye is now First Pentecostal Church. So we support him and will continue to support him. Amen. I want to give honor to Faith and Clayton. Did a wonderful job this week. 
at a conference hosted by hosted by the United Pentecostal Church of Louisiana. They did a wonderful job managing and taking care of pouring into many different music departments across our state, encouraging them. I want to also say a lot of our staff was there, and that's a wonderful thing. Thank you, First Pentecostal Church, for being committed to one another. I didn't have a chance to speak of this last week, but I do want to say it today. At Apostolic Conference last week, I met a lot of young people that came to me and said, Brother Ralston, now these are kids, okay, so they don't know anything about being political. They just said, Brother Ralston, the favorite place on our tour, this is the Mississippi All-State Choir, was Lake Charles First Pentecostal Church. Amen. Amen. We don't boast in that as much as we say that's the will of God. We wanted them to have an experience and we wanted them to know that we back you in the spirit. We back you in song. We back you in your anointing. Amen. So well done, First Pentecostal Church. Well done. Now, today's going to be a little different. I'm going to operate in the gifts of the spirit. And I'm going to work in the gifts of the spirit. And it's, it's just look at your neighbor and say, here we go. Okay. Here we go. All right. So last Sunday evening, my two oldest children, we have two batches. We have an old and a new. They were socializing, and the two younger ones were trying to kill each other. That's what you do when you're boys and you're about that tall. You know, everything's a weapon, and we're at war at all times. And me and Shelly were sitting in the living room, and... She put her phone down, which is the first indication it's about to get rough. And she just said to me this, do you get tired of preaching without notes? And I know exactly where she, she's going. You don't preach. Well, I'm going to put it this way. I speak the language of Shelley. She was saying, could you have done better with Perry Vincent? But take note, Perry's in the house of God today at the beginning of my sermon. Now, I'm on a restrict, I'm on a restricted word. I am, I am, I am, I'm gonna have to go back to pulpit and notes if I don't do right today. So I I'm in a bind. Amen. This week, I'm going to St. Louis to work on behalf of Nam. I covet your prayers. And I want you to understand something about who we are, okay? And I know you're standing, and I have, I have you in mind, but listen to me just for a moment. There's a difference between being Pentecostal and being apostolic, okay? There are hundreds and thousands of Pentecostals out there that that have no authority over their lives. You understand? They spoke in tongues at one time, but they're just a wild vine. They have, they're, they're not able to be contained. If you talk about Pentecost, they get mad. They get mad because their mom was Pentecost, their grandma, and they consider themselves to be Pentecost. And maybe they do speak in tongues, but they're not bearing fruit because they have no authority over them. I'm accountable to you as you are accountable to me. Now, this is not a place that's harsh, but we do preach a, a doctrine and we do hold that accountability and authority is necessary in our lives. There's only a handful of people in this room that have the success that Perry Vincent has. And there's only a handful of people in this room that I have authority over like I have authority over Perry Vincent. I can correct Perry right now on any measure, any part of his life, and he would accept it. Part of that is our history. He came to me when I was new in pastoring and said, Brother Austin, I want to do this. And I said, give me a, a space of time. I came back a month later and said, I don't think it's the will of God. He came back a month later and said, would you do it anyway? I said, yes. He came back three months later and said, it's a mess. 
I said, I know. I've been in prayer. Thus saith the word of the Lord. God will give you what you've lost in six months from now if you do this and this. Now, it takes a lot of courage for me to do that, but I had prayed, God, give me authority in Perry's life. And six months after that, he called me and said, I had made a deal I forgot all about. Was in partners, and the partners called me and said, Perry, we suddenly have an opportunity to sell this, and here's your portion of the cut if you want to do it. And it was the exact number that he had lost. You understand, if you give yourself to authority, God will give you an understanding of your placement and where you're supposed to be going in life. Amen? So I want to be, I want to be, let me put it this way. A lot of people love their preacher, but are, but are weary of their pastor. I want to be pastor. Amen? First Kings chapter 17. Verse 8, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidion, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he had come to the gate of the city, which, behold, the woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Verse 17, it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and his sickness was sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, what have I done unto thee, O thou man of God, art thou come unto to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son. And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the, the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? His, his beginning prayer was a question, which means the man of God did not know this was coming. <laughs> And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child so come into him. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. Look at verse 24. And the woman said unto Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in thy mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. And that the word of the Lord that is in thy mouth is true. Father, bless your, your word in Jesus' name. And I want to say amen. amen. You may be seated. Can I operate in the prophetic today and just flow in the spirit? There is this understood reality in all of our lives that from a scientific perspective is challenged. And that is that time operates in a flow. The fact of the matter is, time does not operate in a flow. Albert Einstein was so passionate about determining this and figuring it out. And he did, and he came to a measure whereby people could perhaps understand it. He said, you're made up of particles, 29 to the 10th power. Those particles consume They are intertwined and working at a very critical and complicated manner. He said, look at these and observe these, as it were, in a three-dimension manner. And then, in a fourth dimension, add the idea of time. In doing such, you would realize that there are certain parts of your existence that are less complicated than others, but then there are items and functions such as the blood or the capacity to think and reason. 
which incorporate multiple strands of function and particles interacting all at one time. The complexity functioning in a cylinder of time is what makes life feel like that it's a flow of time. But in fact, the two are separate. Howbeit, Einstein did not understand the spirit. And the flow of the spirit as it relates to the prophetic utterance of God and the fulfillment of God's will as it relates to you and I in the course of God's purpose. The seventh king of Israel was a man named Ahab. He wanted to remain king, to remain in power and have the authority, but he did not want to yield to God's way. And the only way he could remain as he was centered and surrounded by the enemies of Israel, the only way he could remain a king is if he aligned himself and made allegiances with those of whom were not of covenant that he might hold to some kind of military power. In this, he took unto himself a wife named Jezebel. Jezebel is noted for many things, but perhaps the most important thing is her desire to diversify the worship of Israel. Her approach was brilliant. It's the same approach that is used today. She would not dare come in and say to Israel of who was tied intricately to the existence of God. She would not say, remove those altars and erect these altars to Balaam or to Baal, to Phoenicia or any other. No, 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 no. No, she said it this way. Understand, she knew the commitment of Israel and the awesomeness of Israel's God. Her approach was, I know that you serve the everlasting, the unseen God who is high above, creator of all things. And in this pursuit of your God, there is a gap, a distance. I propose and I know that over regions or what we would call parishes, there are lesser gods. I don't claim that these gods are equal, only that they are in junction with the Almighty. The God of fertility, the God of harvest, they are unique to regions. And what I propose is, beside the, the, the God you serve, that altar on the high place, that you just add another altar. So that when trouble comes, you can pray to one that you can see and relate to. We'll take wood and stone and we'll carve images your God won't allow that because nothing can be framed or fashioned of man that would come close to duplicating his nature. But these lesser gods, so that you will have a personal connection, we will, we will connect you. It is amazing how God fixed that in the New Testament. When he said, I'm not just the God around you, but I'll be the God on the inside of you, huh? Come on, somebody. If you have the Holy Ghost, you've got the fullness of what raised Christ from the dead living inside of you continually. But this is how Jezebel went about it. She said, this is what we need to do. And it, it, it awakened an old rustic prophet. Oh, 
Here come Elijah. We don't know where he comes from. He just rises up out of the desert, walks in and says to Ahab, that woman you married, I know the wickedness of your heart. I know you don't want to be aligned with God and you still want to maintain power. Thus saith the word of the Lord. It will not rain until I decree otherwise. And the man of God walks out and leaves the king looking after him. Now we got problems. I don't know if this is the right way to go about it. It would seem like Elijah may have, may have messed up like your pastor does every once in a while. Right? Maybe his words get ahead of him. We never see that God told him to do this. All we know is he said, I'm mad. I'm fixing to do something about it. And all of these people that are praying to localize gods now probably thought, well, it's a good time to pray to Brooke. by the gate and he says to her go fetch me a little water and he waits until she's about gone and he says hey by the way give me a little bit of a cake and and I'm, I'm hungry and she turns around and gives him the condition that she's in and I don't want you to forget this because it's really important she says we are at a point now where we're going to eat what cake we got left we're going to go to sleep and we're going to die amen now, I know, he, I know he can labor sometimes in getting to us, not that he needs to, but he's waiting for whatever circumstances are working on us to complete that work before he fulfills his promise. But I can testify absolutely that the Lord is always on our side. And if you remain consistent with him, and if you bless him, and you keep his law, and you maintain your passion for his presence, he will answer by and by. You say, Pastor, why don't he come earlier? Because he's working things for our good. Because he's teaching us how to depend on him in a better way. Because he's working on my character, and he's working on my nature. He He will not fail. Is that your testimony? It's mine. And he says, nevertheless, go ahead and make the cake. She does. She makes the cake and she goes back in there after she makes the cake and peers into that vessel. There's enough to make one more. Feeds her son, goes back, looks in. I'll be. There's enough to make one more. Come on, somebody. Quit complaining. He's not going to give you enough for all week long, but he'll give you enough for tomorrow. Either you trust him or you don't, but he's working in your life. I know you want the end and the beginning all put together and you want God to give you his will, but his will sometimes is not ready for you to understand because you don't have the strength, you don't have the courage, you don't have the wisdom, you have the understanding to do what God wants you to do. But if you'll just eat what he gives you for that day and wake up in the morning believing, he'll fulfill his work in you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. I need somebody that will testify right now. It is going to be okay. And every day it's going to get better and better and better and better. But he's working all things. When I can't see it, he's working. When I don't know what he's doing, he's working. But i got to learn how to trust him. Now watch the process. So, Abigail, where's she at? Go, Shelly, go get me a pair of scissors. She turned around and looked at her purse. If you've got a pair of scissors in your purse, you mama of the year. <laughs> She's mama of the year anyway. Huh? So, I'm going to. I'm going to get you those scissors. I know you were all of a sudden. You're like, Pastor, what are you going to do with them scissors? <laughs> you crazy. The Lord spoke to me today and said, I know that you're doing the prayer clause. You got them scissors? Come on, Mama. Keep all mics turned off. I don't want her taking this message over. 
Don't stab me with that, mama. Hey, get ready to come back up here in a minute. The Lord said, I know you got prayer cloths, but the Bible says that they took the apostle's garment and cut it up. He said, you wear a tie today that you're willing to cut up. Because the message I'm about to preach is about to blow this thing wide open today. And we're gonna, we're, I'm going to cut this tie up, and if you need a piece of it, you're going to bring it to your circumstance, and God's going to change some things today in some people's lives. I'm telling you, God's about to change some things. We just, we just starting to get crazy. We're just, we're just starting to step into faith. We're just starting to operate in the Holy Ghost. You understand? Oh, come on. Brother Jack wants a piece. Come on, come on, come on. Now, Brother Jack, I'm going to give you a piece, but nobody else. No, nope. I see you wanting to come. There's going to be plenty for everybody. I got a whole closet full of ties that Shelly doesn't like. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not cutting yours up. But cut Brother Jack a piece off there because I'm not going to deny Brother Jack. But don't cut a big piece, Mama. We got all kinds of people that need. That's. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, 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 this, 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 right. uh-huh. what, what you? Sewing scissors. Why don't you just stay up here and cut while I preach? Because this right here is going to be some work. Oh, you got the tip. So here's what I want you to understand. Watch. Watch, Pastor. You can be seated. Every day, every day she went in and made a cake and, and, and cooked it and gave it to her boy and fed the prophet and ate herself. About four days into it, she heard something. She went around the corner. She saw her baby for the first time in months playing on the floor with his toys. You see, he'd been too weak to play. You see, circumstance had got him down to where he didn't have, he didn't, he didn't have enough energy. The next day, she heard him singing a song. The, the, the goodness of God just began to flow in his life. And then she got up and felt like opening the blinds because when you feast on the goodness of God every day. You see, the first day you read your Bible and pray, you might not feel like a whole lot is going on. But if you get up the next day, you get up the next day and you read another verse and you you pray a little bit longer and you get up the next day and you read another verse and you pray a little bit longer and you get up the next day and you read another verse and you pray a little bit longer. It's not long and you start getting your joy back. You start getting your faith back. You start feeling like opening the blinds and prophesying. You feel like the goodness of God is starting to flow through your life again. God is saying, I made a way for you to overcome. I want to put consistency back into the forefront of your life if you would just lean on me every day I would put back in your family a song and I would put back in your heart a testimony I would revive you with courage suddenly she felt like cleaning some cobwebs out are you hearing me preach Huh? Suddenly she felt like going ahead and testifying outside and saying, this house is not a house of death. This is a house of life. She began to sweep the front porch off. I'm preaching right now. You know I'm preaching. Somebody ought to wake up tomorrow and say, I'm going to testify to my friends and my neighbors and my family. I'm on Jesus' side. I got the Lord on my side. Why are you trying to keep him quiet? Why don't you go ahead and separate yourself from this world? Why don't you go ahead and testify? I'm not like everybody else. I got something on the inside that's working on the outside. Come on, help me preach right now. Somebody testify. I got oil and I got meal. Reason why you don't have joy. You're not cooking in his goodness every day. Your house looks like every other house in the neighborhood. Hearst is pulling up, taking the dead here and there. Now you're alive. Testify, say, I'm alive. 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 Now, all of a sudden, you doing okay back there? I know it. All of a sudden, 
who are like this. All boys and one girl. May the blessings of God flow in your life, honey. You daughter of Judah, I prophesy over you right now because you're standing. The Lord is standing behind you. Because you won't sit down, the Lord won't sit down. <laughs> Woo! Because you refuse to give up, the Lord refuses to give up. Because you're hungry, the Lord is hungry. Yeah. Oh, let him do his wheel. 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 Now, I want you to notice something. He is healthy. Say it with me. Say he's healthy. Say he's fed. He's satisfied. And he dies. She got up. Went and made biscuits. Oil was still there. Satisfaction was still there. Went in and made biscuits. Called to the prophet and said, man of God, it's time to come down. Went in to get her baby. A little surprised he wasn't already up. Kind of pushed on him a little bit. And when she did, she realized his movement was not what it should be. Panic flooded her heart. She leaned down quickly and felt his face. And it was already cold. She grabbed him in her arms and ran in and screamed, oh, man of God. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He was eaten. He was playing. He was revived. And now he's dead. Two things are going on right here in this moment. Two things that are stunning and yet powerful. The first one is this. That the one thing she says to the prophet is this. <laughs> Have you come to call my sin to remembrance? That's the only thing she says to him. Is this what you take delight in, O oh man of God? That you would bring to the surface the condition of my heart what sin are you talking about, woman? And why is it that the first thing you go to is your sin? The first thing you're thinking about is your sin. What sin lies in your heart and why does it come to the surface immediately? It's a great question. And understand where this is going. I am willing to prove to you that her sin was in the difficult days. She prayed to the Almighty. But she also thought, she is my queen. and <laughs> She's been brought into, it would bring us through this problem. And, and that she, that, 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 that she would, would then shift just a little bit and say, and also to, to these other deities. <laughs> you know, at first it was very uncomfortable. Uh, because it's just against everything inside of her. But she just said, would you please oversee us? And, and would you please comfort us? And would you please guide us? And then she just kind of moved away from the prayer. The next day she did it. And the next day she did it. And circumstances just kept, kept going in the negative framework. They just kept getting bad. What was it though now? What was it though now that she says to the man of God, I see clearly that it was wrong. That she now holds it to be a sin that she now is confident that it was the wrong thing to do why is it I'll tell you why because her attitude had been changed you see as long as circumstances are draining the life out of you as long as you're willing to eat one more cake and die you know that it's just circumstance and I can't do anything about it you see but God had revived her baby Life had begun to flow back into her home. His appetite was gained and he had gotten his joy and he was starting to play and now he was dead. And there's only one 
There's only one that, that, that is above circumstances that has in his hand the power of life and death. It's not a man-made God. It's the invisible God of Israel. There's only one that gives life and takes life. There's only one that has the author and the finisher quality to him. There's only one that knows the number of your days. And she knew my baby was healthy. This was not circumstantial. God stepped in and took my baby. And the only thing she could think of was her sin. Now, if we're not careful, we'll make this all about her and miss the message. Because what she does is she testifies, have you determined to bring my sin to my charge? And the man of God looks at this baby. And the Bible says he snatched her from her, her womb or her hands and brought her up to his loft. You know, when the man of God grabs it and goes, he's confused. This is a prophet that walked into the, to, 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 to King Ahab's chamber, right? He walked past all of those of whom were the dignitaries of, of King Ahab's rule. He walked past all officers and advisors and stood squarely in the courtroom of his opinion and said with confidence, I am sick and tired of the way you're treating the law of God. This man is brave and bold. In just a few more verses, he's going to stand on Mount Carmel and call down fire from heaven. He's going to draw a sword and slay 400 prophets. He's not scared of anybody. But right now, he's confused. And when the man of God is confused, he goes to the upper room. He goes back up. <laughs> he goes back up to the upper room. I, I got time to preach all of it. I'm just trying to get to where I'm going. And, and, and suddenly when he gets back to the upper room, he prays a prayer and says, oh, God, why have you done this? And it began to dawn on me. God's not preaching to the little woman. God is preaching to his man. And God is saying to the prophet Elijah, it's a time to move from one dimension to the next dimension. You've been down by the brook and it dried up and you've been in the house of the widow. You know, prophet, I'm about to awaken your voice to a new dimension. Prophet, I'm about to give you the power to speak life into death. Oh, you're not hearing me right now. God is saying to First Pentecostal Church, enough being up here praying that God will keep you. I'm going to keep you, but it's time for you to start preaching revival. It's time for you to start prophesying on a new dimension. It's time for you to start declaring things that are dead back to life. Somebody shout, yeah, I want this place to explode right now. I don't care how dead it is. I don't care how dry it is. I don't care how complicated it is. I need you to open your voice right now and say God's about to turn it around. God is about to turn it around. The preacher is about to preach to the prophet. Oh, come on, somebody. It wouldn't be long and the prophet would be standing on Mount Carmel calling fire down from heaven. Why? Because he was woke up. It wouldn't be long and he would take a sword and slay the prophets of Baal. Why? Because he was waked up. It wouldn't be long and he would call down rain and bring rain down and he would outpace the king's chariot. Why? Because he was woke up. And I say today, oh prophets of First Pentecostal Church, wake up. Wake your voice up. Wake your decree up. Wake your passion up. Listen. Listen to your pastor right now. 
there's three things he spoke to me. Number one, he said, you better learn how to handle your boredom. Quit reaching for your phone. He said, the light of your phone is outshining my light. All you want to do is be entertained. He said, put your phone down and learn to wait on me for five minutes. No, 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 no. No, they'd be up here all over the place. We're just going to put them right here until the Lord determines otherwise. Huh? Turn your phone off. Turn your iPad off and wait on me. He said, Jeff, I'm going to speak to you in dimensions. As a matter of fact, I was in this house this morning praying, and I looked up, and I literally saw the Lord stocking shelves. And he said, I'm putting on the shelves now blessings. And he said, you come back here and pray on Monday and Tuesday and you'll see that it's all gone. Your people is about to take my goodness. They're about to take my deliverance. They're about to take my joy. They're about to. But we got to get out of wanting to be entertained and we got to entertain the presence of the Lord. You hear me? I said, we got to get out of the attitude of wanting to be entertained and we got to entertain the presence of the Lord. There's a reason why we got to have powerful altar calls because it is a response to the message. There's something wrong when we hear a good sermon and walk out and never entertain the power of God in that building. Quit wanting to be entertained and learn how to entertain his glory. The second thing he told me is this. He said, watch the flow, Jeffrey. He was talking to me about this Friday. And the flow is very important because all of science determines that, watch, the intensity of the human experience is so powerful, it makes us feel like we're in a flow when we're not. And he said, the circumstances and the intensity of life can make you feel like you're in a spiritual flow when you're not. Good church feels like spiritual flow. Hectic schedule feels like spiritual flow. He said, get out of it and wait on me. I'll guide you in the prophetic. I'll tell you what I want you to say when I want you to say it. But relate to me. This had just come to my spirit. I got a phone call last night late and this uh, pastor that I pastor. And he said, oh, Brother Austin, we're about to go out of town for some enjoyment, much needed haven't done it in years. And he said, I got a, a, a situation on, and, and, and a man that's got authority. And he called me in X, Y, Z. And so immediately my mind was like, okay, how can we fix this? And how can we? And the spirit spoke to me and said, no, you ain't fixing nothing. You tell my man of God, go and enjoy your trip. I'm going to sear off the issue. He may want to speak. He ain't going to say a word. Now, I know this makes you nervous, but I'm in the flow, okay? And, 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 and we got to understand God's in charge of things. And sometimes we want to try to produce an Ishmael when God says, if you'll just wait on me, I'll give you an Isaac. Come on, somebody. And then he told me something else. And this is, the, this is the last word, and we're about to prophesy into our atmosphere. You're going to speak into the atmosphere of your life. And then we're just going to put these things on the floor, and you take them. No matter if you want more, I'll have another tie next week. Here's what we're going to do. He said, the, the verse is clear. Watch and pray. That you what? Watch and pray. He said, praying alone is not right. He said, people aren't watching. I'll give them a sign if it's right or wrong. They're not watching. 
They want to do something and then try to pray out of it. But I told them, watch and pray. Some of the mess you're in right now, if you had been watching and praying, you wouldn't have to pray now to try to get out of it. Right? He wants to manifest himself in a powerful way. He wants to manifest. He wants to tell you no to that person, but you got to agree. The prophet is in the spirit. He is in the dimension before and after. But in this moment, God is preaching to him. It's time for you to get your voice of resurrection and life. So here's what we're going to do. Now listen, sometimes in altar calls, you guys can just kind of wait on me, and I understand that, right? But today we're just going to go after God, right? We're just going to go after God, okay? We're going to need that in a moment, but not right now. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, worship team, y'all can come on up here and get behind me. You can go on up, but we're going to wait. We're going to wait just a moment because what we need is volume right here and not volume through here. We'll have that volume in a moment because it's going to set the tone for worship. But right now, we gotta, we got to use our voice, right? we got to use our voice. Here's, here's what we're going to do. If, you, if you've got an issue, a circumstance, welcome to the party. So I, I'm going to tell you, there's not a person in here that's got life going on that doesn't have something crazy going on. It's 2022. So I'm not saying, do you have an issue? I'm asking another question. Do you got faith? I know, I know you got problems. I'm asking you, do you have a prophetic voice? Do you have the power to prophesy? Huh? Pastor, how shall I prophesy? Here's what you're going to say. Father, forgive me of my sins. Come on now, help me. Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, forgive me for everything and anything that I've done that would separate me from your glory. I crave your glory right now more than I crave anything else in life. I pray, God, that you would remove me from the disappointment that I have created and caused. I pray, God, right now that you would remove me from all distractions and all chaos and all circumstances. And you would draw my mind out of the valley of anxiety. That you would draw me right now into the beautiful pasture of your keeping. That you would bring me into the fulfillment of your peace right now. And that you would set my mind in the word right here. Sharpen the edge of my conscience. Awaken me to the purity of your passion and power. I pray God now draw me by the wind of your spirit into Calvary's strength right now I abide in your suffering I relate to your suffering right now and I joy with you God in the fulfillment of your promise life eternal in me right now I declare I am filled with the Holy Ghost I declare that the resurrection of Jesus Christ abides in me I declare that I'm filled with the spirit that raised Christ from the dead and by that spirit right now. I speak things that are not as though they were. Come on congregation, roar. I know you don't feel worthy because you're not but the spirit is about to speak out of you. I declare things that are not as though they were. I bind the works of the creation against me. I bind the powers of darkness against me. I release the blessings of God into my life. I want my men to rear back and roar right now. I want God's men. Let me rephrase that. I want God's men to roar right now. I want God's men to roar right now. Come on out of your belly. He said, shall flow rivers. If a river's going to flow out of your belly, your voice has got to be from your same belly. I want you daughters of Judah to clap your hands right now. Daughters of Judah, clap your hands and shout unto God. Shout unto God. I hear the voice of revival. I hear the prophet Elijah speaking right now. I hear the voice of revival. I hear the voice of revival. It sounds like many waters. Come on, prophesy. Come on, declare something good. Come on, speak the favor of God into your life. Woo! 
Step out of the dimension of your flesh. Step out of the dimension of time and enter right now to the prophetic. Enter right now to the power of God. You're about to prophesy. You're about to decree. You're about to set your voice to the atmosphere of your life. Three times, three times, three times the prophet had to lay over that body and say, life, come into him. Three times. I want you to listen right now to the spirit. Is your miracle breathing yet? <laughs> Woo. Is your miracle breathing yet? <laughs> Woo. He ya. Young man, turn to young man. Husband, you can join with your wife or you can join with another man. Lady to lady right now. I want you to join together. We've already repented. I don't want you repenting right now. I just want you saying good things are going to happen. The spirit is going to start flowing. <laughs> The stench of death and sorrow is going to be moved from my life. My house is beginning to flourish with joy. I'm about to open the curtains. My children are about to sing. Hey, come on. Hallelujah. We know he's going to keep us. We know he's going to feed us. But right now, he's about to do more than that. He's about to revive us. Doesn't it feel good to operate in faith right now? Doesn't it feel good to operate in faith? That's what you're releasing right now. With every positive word, with every biblical verse, you're releasing faith right now. I speak it in the name of Jesus. I release it in the name of Jesus. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Find you somebody else right now and operate in the gifts. Operate in the gifts. Mom, dad, don't hesitate to lay your hands on your children or your teenager and speak it right now. Speak it right now. I decree the grace of God upon them. I decree uniqueness upon them. I decree separation upon them. No weapon formed against them shall prosper. They are of the royal priesthood. They are of the royal family. I set them apart. I set their minds apart. They'll never be comfortable in this world. They'll I'll never be comfortable with the things of this world. I pray for apostolic stubbornness. Hello, ye call ye. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I pray right now, God, to give you courage to wait. Having done all to stand, to stand. Oh, it's flowing now. It's flowing now. Get in the vein of it right now. Get in the vein of it right now. Woo! Get in the vein of it right now. It may feel different. I understand that. But child, give yourself to it right now. I'm speaking to you, young lady. Give yourself to it right now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, to your will, to your way. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Woo! 
all across this house. Let's operate in the gifts all across this house. I want you to begin to take off the shelf what you want. I need a season of peace. I need an elevation of joy. I need the gifts of soul winning. I need a breakthrough. I can on my thinking. Come on, take it off the shelf right now. Reach up and get it. Reach up and get it. I need a new season. I need a new perspective. I need a new passion for the Word of God. Reach up and get it right now. I need to know how to wait. I need to know how to wait on the Lord. I need to know how to wait on the Lord. Give me a spirit of waiting. Yes, yes, yes. Some of you got a testimony. You need that testimony to break out. I want you to pray right now. Lord, help me to articulate my passion. Help me to know how to speak the things that you have put into me. Give me a platform. Put somebody in my life. Help me to be a soul winner. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I love that sound. That sound of many waters right there. I love that sound. Sound of many waters. I love that sound right there. Yes. Wait on the Lord. Come on, you might not be comfortable. You might not be comfortable, but put your head, put your head back right now. Lift your voice up right now. It may be the first time you've ever done it, but I want you to open your mouth and say, God is, God is going to bless me. God is going to increase me. God is going to flow through my life. Come on, let's wait on the Lord here right now. Let's wait on the Lord here right now. My God, I feel a breaking right now in one specific area. Some of you get... You keep getting trapped in the same temptation right now. You know the Lord can break that. He can break that. If you're tired of having to pray for the same disease, mind, and spirit, lift your hands right now. Say, God, God, draw me into a deeper spiritual engagement. I'm tired of battling the same mess. Tired of crying the same tears. Come on, you got to be you. You got to be apostolic. You got to be you right now. You got to be bound. Come on, enter the covenant. Remind him of who you are. I belong to you and you belong to me. You've been praying for your breakthrough. You've been praying for your breakthrough. 
Go ahead and take it now. 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 I will delight in the goodness of the Lord. I will see his salvation in the day of living. <laughs> My enemy will stumble. They will stumble and fall. Oh, my God, I feel another wave of his goodness coming across the room right now. I feel another wave of his utterance, another wave of his prophetic joy coming across the room. There's something refreshing about just abiding in his, in his spirit right now. Just abiding in the sanctuary of his spirit right now. Woo! Halabaye kiaye. This is where the cherubims of mercy connect. Yes, yes, yes. This is where the fulfillment of his plan is known and understood. Oh, come on now. As the heart pants, yeah. As the heart pants, so will I pant after thee. Tear down. As God spoke to Gideon, so he speaks to us. Tear down every altar. Tear down every altar. Designated and defined to the wrong deity. Build the altar. The one altar, build it to Jesus. I give you my life, I give you my all, I give you everything that I am. Don't be bashful, pray in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Don't be passive, pray in the Holy Ghost. He said, building up your most holy faith. Oh, your faith is revived and stretched and renewed if you pray in the Holy Ghost. They that wait upon me shall renew their strength. They that wait upon me shall renew their strength. They that wait upon me shall renew their strength. They that tarry in me shall renew their strength. Oh, come on, singleness of mind. Singleness of mind. Right now, singleness of mind. Just like that woman that touched the hem of his garment. It don't matter where he's going. I got to reach out and touch him. His agenda, his purpose. His agenda, his purpose has got to wait. I got to touch him. I got to touch him. I got to touch him. <laughs> Whoo. Come on now. This is what it means to flow in the spirit. We've been in the dimension of time, but right now we're in the prophetic flowing. Flowing, flowing, flowing. Flowing. The longer you stay here, the more things become clear. <laughs>
Yes, yes, yes. Come on, Summer will take care of your babies right now. Let's just entertain the presence of the Lord. Let's just stay in the sanctuary until we begin to feel that clear, beautiful resurrection power quickening our flesh, quickening our mind. The Lord is doing 15 and 20 year works right now. He's doing 15 and 20 year works right now. The Lord is flowing through people's lives and giving you strength to forgive. Oh my God. Giving you strength to release, giving you strength to let go. Just go ahead and operate in that right now. Go ahead and say, Jesus, I release it. Jesus, I let it go. It's a new day, fresh anointing is flowing my way, it's a season of power and prosperity.
Hello, Pastor Jeff Rawson here. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. I pray the blessings of God upon you this week as you continue to strengthen yourself in Him. And as you continue in His blessings, I pray that you'd remember First Pentecostal Church. Bless us with your finances. Bless us with your prayer. Combine with us, link with us, partnership with us as we do our best to get the gospel out to the whole world. I pray again that God would bless you this week. Thank you for joining us.